timing drift with RPM changes with my UNO ignition controller has been a huge problem. No matter what I did for the longest time, I could not keep the system from losing about 8 degrees between about 300 and 3000 RPMs. I have finally solved the problem and that's what this update is about. This is the latest version of my Arduino ignition controller. And here's the whole setup. This Arduino here simply drives a little DC motor underneath there that is connected to this rotor, uh, which I just uh, static electricity discharged because it's uh, January. Uh, anyway, and so with this pot, I can, of uh, course, control the motor speed. Um, uh, this setup doesn't look a whole lot different than it did uh, a, a few months ago. However, the software has been improved substantially. And um, I'm here today to show that I finally gotten rid of the nagging um, ignition timing drift that I was having as speed increased. And so the net result is that uh, now uh, when I pick a timing point, uh, a, a number of degrees of advance or retard, uh, that's what I get. And it stays there until I change something in the code. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to look at the little strobe here as it impinges upon the, uh, 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 the degree wheel that's got magnets under it and again two Hall effect sensors, only one of which I'm using at this moment. And so uh, what I'm going to show you is how steady the uh, timing is. Uh, the numbers that you'll see aren't that important because that just has to do with exactly where I've got that little uh, strobe light positioned. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this thing uh, up and down from zero RPMs to about 3,000 and I'll make a couple of quick comments about it as I do that. Here we're going to test my latest advance in uh, uh, timing control. And we're going to run up uh, from uh, 0 RPMs to around 3000 and then back down. And what we'll see here is we don't get any little strobe lights, although it's hard to see them at those speeds because they're only 50 microseconds long. Anyway, we won't get any strobes until we go over 130 RPMs. And the exact number you'll see on the strobe isn't all that important because it could be, it, it just depends on, on where my little uh, light is sitting and where that little toothpick is sitting. So you'll see now as we get up to around 130 RPMs here, there the light is just starting to flash. I don't know if you can see it, but we may not have sync just yet. So now, there we are, here we come. Okay, now we've got three. It says 350 on there. The point is just keep that number in mind. So we're gonna. This this essentially is going to be 10 degrees retarded. That's the equivalent of 10 degrees retarded, and it'll stay that way till we get to 1,000 RPMs, and then it'll switch to 20 degrees advanced, which is a change of uh, of uh, 30. So there we switched 30 degrees advanced. Now we're at 20, and so. Uh, the timing will remain at that point until we get up to, I don't know where I've got it set right now, 2,000, because my little motor only goes to 3,000 right now. And I just want to show what will be the soft uh, overspeed control coming into play here at, uh, I think, 2,800 or something like that. And then the hard, uh, and that'll be a 40 degree retard on the ignition right there. And then if we go to uh, another couple of hundred degrees higher then we go to 60 degrees retard to really make the engine run lousy and there we go so that's the whole deal right there uh, I can control that and you'll notice if you look where the toothpick is we're only changing by maybe a couple of degrees and I'm not completely done yet uh, uh, with everything now we're back down uh, below the 2800 degrees which would be the normal running for this particular engine design Okay, a normal max. But I just wanted to show you that I can do it because I can 
put these numbers any place I want just with a change of one number in the code so now we're we're above a uh, thousand rpm so we go below a thousand and we'll drop back to the retard position here as soon as I turn the knob far enough there we go okay and then shut him off so that's the demo here's my solution to the drift sorry about the poor graph by the way but the blue and red lines should be directly on top of each other that's what I had to fix I calculate the time it takes for the rotor to go one revolution and divide that by 360 I do that within the north magnets interrupt it's called one degree that's my key number for everything else the problem was that somewhere in the interrupt I was losing a few microseconds maybe five or so that few microseconds didn't make much difference in timing at slow RPMs where the length of one degree was fairly long like 300 microseconds but as the speed increased that same few five or so microseconds becomes a big deal when the one degree time is only 50 microseconds or so the solution was to add a calculated amount of microseconds to the one degree calculation I know it sounds simple now but it sure wasn't simple back then well now it's back to the bench for some more embellishments then on to an engine